All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We are going to use the beginning of this video here for the first few minutes to talk about some moral, some ethical questions that come with uh, reselling. And I want to get your opinions on that and see what you think. And I promise you that none of them have to do with this highly inappropriate costume. They're going to be totally different type questions. So if you want to hang around and listen to that and provide your input, that's great. If you just want to see what sold out of the eBay cave tonight, you can skip ahead about 10 minutes or so. And stick around for the very end and you'll see the interesting item that sold out of the Homeschool Hustler store as well. Bragging, what you doing? Oh, gosh. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, you counting, counting Scrabble racks? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Okay. Are you going to count the Scrabble tiles next? Yeah. How much you think that's worth? $4? Because there's hundreds of them. There might be over a thousand tiles. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Think you're up to it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I won't scare you again. All right, Reagan, how many were there? 73. 73? All right, let me see. Did you put the number? Put it in the box for me okay. so I don't forget it when I go to take pictures. And there were like four blue ones? Is that what there is? There's like a few green ones. A few green ones? Two. Somebody painted them already. 73. All right, now, are you up? By the way, why are you wearing these silly glasses? Mm -hmm. Are you up to counting those tiles? You want to take a break for a little bit? So you just made a dollar counting those. You want to make four dollars if you count all these tiles. There's probably like a thousand of them in here, I would think. I'll count them now. You want to count them now? Yeah. All right, why don't you get a box? We'll find you a box and we'll fill it up and you can take it up. It'll probably be easier on the table because you're going to need a lot of space upstairs. And then if you make four dollars doing that, you can make five dollars. All right, how much was it? One thousand two hundred and sixty-one. 1,261 Scrabble pieces. That's pretty amazing. Now I'm gonna, about to go to sleep. <laughs> that took a long time, didn't it? Yeah, it took like Well, listen, minutes. here's your money. Here's your money. And thank you for counting those. But what about the game boards? Uh, I'll do those. They're really easy. Okay. okay give, me, give me a hug. All right. Love you, baby. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave tonight and we are going to show you what sold today out of both the Commonwealth Picker store and the Homeschool Hustler store. But before we do that, we're going to have a little conversation about some ethical issues, what's right and what's wrong to do as a reseller, what's right and wrong to do as you're out there sourcing. Uh, and that was brought up by a video that we had come out, I think, last week. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're also going to talk about after that what sold and we had we were just under what we like to see. So we have two stores. The big store is the Commonwealth Picker store. And that's the store we've been running for quite a long time. And we have about 850 or so items in there. Not huge high-priced items, but we try to list things quite often. I can't list as much because I'm also a high school history teacher. And it's up to my wife. She does a lot of the listing when I'm back at school and not on break. And she lists, you know, anywhere between two to ten items a day. And I try to list as I, as I have time throughout the day. So we also have a homeschool hustler store where our kids do a little bit of reselling. We usually keep around 40 items in that store, uh, give or take a little bit. So we shoot for $200 a day. And we were under that. We were at $155.69 out of the Commonwealth Picker store and $34.81 out of the Homeschool Hustler store. And so we were at $191.50. And then right before I pressed play on this thing, I heard a cha-ching over here out of the Commonwealth Picker store. And we made one more sale for $30. And that put us over our goal for the day, which is $221.50. So we usually try to shoot for $200, which is going to give us enough money to really make ends meet for our, for our household, for our family, to supplement the money we make as a teacher. So at any rate, uh, we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. But I did want to bring up the question that I brought up at the beginning of this video, which is, are there moral or ethical reasons out there when you're sourcing and when you're buying items and what price you're buying them for? And I think obviously the answer is yes, but, but many resellers disagree. So I kind of want to give you my take on it. 
and then address something. We had bought a John Deere hat. Matter of fact, it's this John Deere hat right here. And I have bought some in the past and I've sold them in different scenarios. And we put a video out and unfortunately that video had terrible audio. So if you watch that, my apologies when we uploaded it, the audio wasn't good. And I immediately had people saying, hey, you know, you could have got that hat cheaper than you got it. And the story is, if you haven't seen the video, that I was sourcing at a at a uh, parking lot sale is essentially what it was on the on a hundred mile yard sale. And I'm always looking for hats just because I've I've I have done pretty good with hats. I sell cheap ones, I sell expensive ones, whatever I can make a buck on. And I saw a guy digging through some hats, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna wait a minute, wait till he's done digging through them. And he pulled out that hat right there and asked the guy, I said, how much is it? And and he said a quarter, and I went, oh. <laughs> I really wanted that hat. So at any rate, I could have right there said, hey, you know, I'll give you 50 cents for that hat or I'll give you a dollar for that hat or I'll give you $20 for the hat with the guy who was selling it. I didn't do that. The guy bought it and I decided that I would follow him to the next little table over there and I waited for him to, to look at whatever items he was looking at. And then I, he came away and I said, hey, you know, would you take $20 for that hat? And he looked at me like I was crazy and he said, sure, no problem. And I gave him the 20 bucks and he thanked me for it. And I went on my way. And a lot of people was like, why did you offer him 20 bucks? He would have taken five bucks. I think I had five or six people um, say that. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess you're right. But I thought he was a reseller because of the items he was looking at. And because of the items that he had already bought, I'm like, this guy knows his stuff. He was buying things that I would buy. And so I was like, well, hey, I'm just going to offer him. Maybe he knows that John Deere hats sell. Maybe he doesn't know how much that one sells for. I'm going to offer him 20 bucks. And he was kind of like, holy cow, sure, I'll take it. I just spent a quarter. He said, I only bought it because I didn't like the way my hair, I forgot to comb my hair today. I wanted to put the hat on. I'm like, well, okay. So he was happy to take it. And then the other point of view is, hey, if you know that item's worth 250 bucks and and you just just walk up to the guy and say, hey, will you take 20 bucks for that hat? It's probably not the right thing to do. So there's the issue. Now, it wasn't that guy wasn't selling that hat. He had bought that hat, and I went up and asked him if he would take that amount of money. And I think that was kind of the, the discrepancy there. So I want to know what you think. What are some of your ethical issues out there? What are the do's and don'ts? So uh, I think part of it is when you're out there sourcing you ask your you know if let me give you a couple scenarios you know if somebody came up to me and said hey you know i know you're a picker you know i watch your show would you look at this item and tell me how much it's worth and what would you pay me for it and if i look at the item let's take this hat right here somebody walked up to me and said hey uh kevin you know commonwealth picker here's this hat you know what will you give me for it? you know what's it worth what will you give me for it they know what i do they know that I'm a reseller and they ask me my opinion and then they want to sell it for to me. And if, if I say, hey, this hat, it's just John Deere, I'd sell for 15 bucks. Because I've actually had people come and ask me those questions before. And if they ask me that question and I'm, I'm going to say, if I know the answer to the question and I say, oh, it's not worth anything, it's worth 25 bucks, you know, I'll give you 12 for it or something. That's an ethical issue. That's just lying. That's being dishonest. And, and I have a problem with that. Maybe I should have a problem with the other. I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, if if I lied to somebody about it, about the value of something, that's a different story. Now, I bought those bowls not very long ago, and I bought them for a buck, and I didn't I didn't have anybody complain about that. That was the price she asked for. I gave her her dollar, and and I went and sold them for three hundred and fifty bucks. You know what? Where where do you draw the lines? I bought gold jewelry before. Hey, I know that gold jewelry's worth you know seventy five dollars for that little thin gold necklace or whatever, and I just paid a buck for it. Do we have an obligation to educate the seller? Um, what scenarios is it okay to you know make lowball offers? What scenarios shouldn't you do that? I think for me the rule of thumb is just don't lie to people. You know, don't say hey. You know, I'm buying this for X if you're actually buying it for Y. If so, and I've had people ask me, you know, why do you want this for? What are you going to use it for? I tell people I'm a reseller. Now, I don't wear it on my sleeve, but I'm I'm happy to tell people. I'm not ashamed of what I do. I, I do it for my family. I do it for my kids. So um, what are those issues? What are those lines that, that you wouldn't cross? Um, would you tell somebody a, a little white lie to get a better deal on something? I don't think the dollar matter dollar dollar amount matters. You know, if I had offered that guy uh, 50 bucks for that hat, 
how is that different than 20? You know, is it, would it take half? Would it take 200, you know, would it take $125 to make it okay? Um, should I have offered him five? Should I have told him how much it was worth and then negotiated? I think if he approached me first and asked me, then I think that's probably the right thing to do. Just because I know the value of something doesn't mean that, I, in my opinion, that I have an ethical obligation to tell somebody else the value of it. Now, if they ask me something, you know, I think it's my my moral obligation to, to be honest with them. So there's just a couple of scenarios. Uh, there's a few more we could, we could uh, put on the table. I think if you own a store, let's take that jewelry, for instance. Let's say that I own a jewelry store and somebody comes to me and says, hey, how much is this jewelry worth? You know, I'm obviously an expert. They're probably going to ask me how much it's worth and then offer to sell it to me. Kind of like Pawn Stars, right? They walk in there and they do the whole spiel um, and they know they're experts and then they look up the value and they bring in the expert and then they come to a fair agreement. Um, I don't think that's the scenario we're in out there. I don't think we're obliged to do that because we're not being approached. We're going to people that are willingly and wantingly getting rid of items. And, you know, I think we as resellers bring our knowledge to the table. I think that that hat, for instance, was not going to be worth $300 to that gentleman. It just wasn't. It was going to be worn. It was going to probably end up in a yard sale somewhere and some other reseller was going to get it. Now, do I know that for a fact? No, I don't. Um, but that's more than likely what was going to happen to it. What brings value to items is people out there who want that item and then the people who bring that item and present it to them. You know, I hear people complain when I'm out and about and they and, and showing yard sales and they're like, oh, when people start bringing out how much the Goodwill prices are on it and, you know, and they expect you to pay that for it, it doesn't bother me. It does not bother me. If somebody wants to put a sign, if Goodwill wants to put a sign, this is how much they're going for on, on eBay. Okay. I have no problem with it whatsoever, none whatsoever. I'm trying to get the best price I can for an item on eBay. So if somebody's using eBay at their yard sale to try to you know, convince me to buy it, I've got no problem with it. I'm not going to buy the item because I can't make money on it, but it doesn't bother me that they're trying to get the best price for that item. So. Now, I think there are other moral issues and ethical issues. You know, when you're selling, clearly, you have to represent your item fairly and honestly. If you know something is not working and you represent it as working, that's a problem. If you don't know and you say you don't know and that's an honest answer, I have no problem with that either. There's obviously issues with any selling situation and ethical issues, but I'm curious to get your opinion on these issues and what are some of your practices out there. Do you ever want willingly tell somebody, hey, I've got to pay more for something? I've done that before, actually. I have done that before. Matter of fact, I kind of did it with this hat. My guess is he would have taken $5 for that hat. He would have probably, definitely would have taken 10 He was very happy to take 20 on it. And, you know, he made, um, what, he paid a quarter. So he made 100 times his, his well, not quite, 85 times his uh, initial investment in the hat in about a minute. And I'll make about 10 to, you know, 12 percent, um, 15 percent max. Uh, not percent, but times mine. I'm very, very happy with that. I'm very thankful I can do what I do. I'm thankful for eBay and I'm thankful for the buyers out there um, because it really does allow me to do things for my family. And that's the other issue, right? If I were to honestly give this guy more ha more money for this hat, if, if that's what you think is honest out there, I don't know. You know, essentially, it's taking money from, from my kids, from my wife, from my family, and opportunities they might have. Now, we're not destitute. I'm not saying that. And I don't think the dollar amount of anything really should matter. It's the, it's the base root issue of, the, of the, um, whatever the transaction is. Like, for instance, you know, it's not okay to steal something for $100. It's also not okay to steal something for a dollar. So... I don't think the dollar amount really matters that much. I think it's a matter of how something's done and, and how honest you are. And I'm not always, I have not always been honest and I try to be, and I'm aware of those things. You know, I'm out, a, when I, I bought a guitar for my daughter the other day, for instance, and she said, or I was at the yard sale and I said, hey, you know, uh, my daughter really liked this thing. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, is there a chance I'd resell this? And there probably was, but I, I ended up giving it to my daughter. Um, there are a lot of things that I'll, you know, I'll say something like, yeah, my daughter would love this, which she probably would, and she doesn't end up getting it. She Most of the time she does if I say something like that. So that's the kind of thing that 
probably we should avoid. Does it really matter in the end? Um, maybe not, but you know, for me it does. You know, I don't, I don't like to tell somebody I'm buying it for X if I know I'm buying it for Y. If I'm buying it to resell it, I have no problem if somebody asks me to tell them that. So, all right, I'm sorry for that rant, but I really just did that because I think it's an interesting topic, and I think it's a topic that we do need to explore a little bit as resellers out there. What is okay? What's acceptable? And we're not all going to agree. And the people that brought this issue up, I actually have a great deal of respect. Anybody that's going to say, hey, I'm going to make sure this person feels fair. Hey, here's one more issue. What about the guy who sold it for a quarter? You know, should we then go back to that guy who obviously, you know, didn't realize what it's worth and then give money to him? Would it be a nice thing to do? Yes. Matter of fact, I've done that before. I've done that on multiple occasions when I knew the people or at least knew where to find them. So... I don't know. Tell me your stories out there. Tell me what you think. I know it can be a controversial issue, but I'm just curious to see what you think. So now let's talk about for a minute what's sold and talking about ethical issues here. Here's a sale. And my wife says, I do not want to list these things anymore. She says, don't you realize that your grandmother watches this show? And I do. So Mumsy, if you're out there looking, I'm showing this side for you, but you got to close your eyes here. So uh, there you go. It's a uh, leg Avenue dirty cop. And this is the plus size model and it was originally 50 bucks and everything's here and my wife said everything's here and it's nice and it's in the package and we bought this you know I'm not even quite sure I think we paid just a couple bucks for it at a yard sale and it sold for $27.95 plus shipping so $42 total so um, not much of a discount but you know you probably these things aren't growing on trees out there all right here is another inflatable and this is a thanksgiving inflatable and they were originally 15 bucks and we sold it for 15 bucks plus shipping so they're gonna end up paying more than they would have paid new but the thing about inflatables that make them pretty good resellers is they don't often make the same inflatable two years in a row because the people who buy inflatables like to buy different inflatables and collectible you know they collect them and they use them all over their yard and so they make different models every year and I'm not sure this one will be. This is probably this is a Walmart brand. You'll probably see it in in Walmart again. But you could certainly, uh, I maybe you could say this is a moral and ethical issue to resell something for more than it originally cost. I don't think so because I'm not twisting anybody's arm. I didn't twist his arm. He readily accepted the money that I offered him. He didn't have to. I'm not twisting anybody's arm here. Now, matter of fact, I take my pictures of these type items that are new. I take the picture and even include the $14.97 just so I don't get negative feedback. Now, if it was a sticker, I would probably take it off, but it's not. It's right there on the package, and you can't take it off. So I see a lot of these that list them, and they take the picture without the price tag on it. Christmas trees as well that they do, and I don't. I usually leave it on there unless you can peel it off. So at any rate, one sold, and then... And then within minutes, another one sold. So we are into these for about $3, let's see, $23.67, I think. And so we're only making about $10, bucks, um, about $9 after fees, maybe close to 10 on these. And we bought five of them. So we're going to make 50 bucks on these. Nothing special, but it was the last ones that they had at uh, Walmart at the end of the season. We bought them in early December and they made 50 bucks on it. I'm happy. All right, here is a Hallmark keepsake ornament that we bought in a yard sale video not too long ago. And it was in a whole box of stuff we bought for $10. And this was one of them and it sold for $7. So nothing amazing. It'll be about a $3.50 profit after we ship it. But think about that. That's just $3.50 out of our $10. And we got a whole box of ornaments that were selling in the booth. Speaking of the booth, our antique booths are doing pretty good. Uh, our Christmas booth is doing really good as well. We're selling off tons and tons of Christmas stuff already. Halloween stuff's almost gone, so we're doing pretty good there. All right, this is a different inflatable, and this is a little Pilgrim Thanksgiving inflatable. And it reminds me of Chick-fil-A, you know, the turkey. What's the turkey going to eat here? I'm not quite sure. I doubt it's going to eat turkey. I just heard another cha-ching. Uh, sold a shirt. Okay, and it sold for 
and it was originally $40. So this person's gonna get a bit of a deal. $37.41 is the total price. So just like the other person paid a little bit more than it actually cost, this person's gonna get a about a 2%, di about a 5% discount off of that price. So they're making out on it. So it's a service in a sense in giving people cheaper prices that you buy and you store the items for a year. And in some cases, it's just essentially a service because they're trying to get an item. I don't know, maybe they live out in the middle of nowhere and they can't even access a Walmart. I'm not quite sure. So We sold a couple of uh, backgammon replacement pieces as well. And last but not least, and this is a Blue Ridge Mama buy. It's a thrift store buy, I believe, because I didn't buy these. Actually, you know what? I might have bought these now that I recall but I'm not positive, it's been a while. So we're gonna call them a Blue Ridge Mama buy because they definitely were a Blue Ridge Mama listing and they sold for $30 free shipping. So not an amazing pair of Chuck Taylors, but definitely uh, good enough to make some money on. We'll probably end up making, say we bought them at the Goodwill for $3, we're gonna end up with shipping, we're gonna end up making about $18 profit on these. All right, so thanks for joining us and thanks for letting me go through that rant. Uh, these are the kind of things that go through my mind a little bit and I'm curious to get your opinion out there. So if you would, leave some comments below. You know, don't forget to be polite and just respect everybody's opinions out there. And we can't thank y'all enough for watching the show. It's been terrific and we appreciate you and we appreciate the comments. And stay tuned and maybe we'll show a little bit of some other footage. That all right, we got Reagan in here, one of the homeschool hustlers, and she sold something that was, I know, is a hard thing to sell because you really like these, don't you? What do they say on them? Um, one of a kind. They say one of a kind, except for, you know what? There's two of them. <laughs> and you've been eating a blue popsicle, I can tell. <laughs> All right, and you came down here because I asked you to so you could get your dollar for selling these, and I was singing, there's that Roger Miller record behind you. And we went to the apple orchard the other day, didn't we? That was fun. And what song was I singing? Do you remember? Um, my uncle used to love me, but she died. My uncle used to love me, but she died. And Reagan heard that and thought, what in the world is that? I thought uncle was a man, and she's right. But anyway, this is what sold. And Blue Ridge Mama bought these at a trip that we went on to Stanton, Virginia. And it was a fun little trip, and we stayed in the Airbnb. Actually, we, I think we may even have these on video when we bought these. And I would have never picked these up, but it says Molly Hatch on the inside. And she told me that that was a anthropology brand. And I think we paid $4 a piece for them, if I recall. Now, that, I could be wrong, but I think that's what we did. And she told me to pick them up. And I picked up a few things that day that I haven't sold yet. We bought the Rock'em Sock'em Robots there, too. And these sold for $34.81 plus shipping. And so we're going to give each of the homeschool hustlers a dollar to spend, a dollar to save, and a dollar to donate. We're going to take the rest and reinvest it into the homeschool hustler store. So we appreciate everybody out there who's made a purchase through there. And you want to say thanks? Thank you. All right. And we'll see you next time.